ओके डियर स्टूडेंट दिस इज दी कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर टू कैनमेटिक्स ऑफ ए एस फिजिक्स नाइन सेवन जीरो टू एंड एज यू नो दैट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द डिसप्लेसमेंट टाइम ग्राफ एंड वेलासिटी टाइम ग्राफ फॉर अ बॉडी मूविंग अलॉन्ग द हॉरिजेंटल लाइन एंड हेयर वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस द वर्टिकल मोशन और वेन द बॉडी इज moving vertically upward or downward whatever the situation here uh in uh, this lecture we are starting from the concept that we have a ball and this ball is uh, being thrown uh upward from point a and is going towards point b and the related graph is here the displacement time graph is here from point a we are going to point b and then what is happening the ball is coming back to position the same position so you you can say that it is position c or is position a but just to mention this point as a separate point the purpose is that we are considering a, point, a time has been passed yani this time has been passed and uh, of course the position of the ball is same as before yani ball has been thrown from point a and is coming back to point a but of course a time uh, is taken to go up or move up from a to b which is t1 you can say so this is your t1 and when you are coming back from b to c what is happening you are taking time t2 so total time will be t1 plus t2 so the thing is that here we have to consider that what is the situation of the velocity and uh, uh, at different points so first of all we have to recall that whether we are talking about uh, uh, the velocity time displacement time graph in case of horizontal motion or vertical motion but one thing which we have learned is that the slope of the displacement time graph is velocity because velocity is nothing but the rate of change of displacement so if we have a displacement time graph so with the help of this uh, graph we can determine the velocity so this is very important here you can say and see that at this point the velocity is positive we have taken the velocity positive why because the slope over here is positive slope of the graph is positive at this point the slope is zero so the velocity is zero and you will say that the uh, ball has been reached to its highest point or at the top position or top position one thing which we have to mention here that uh, constantly the gradient is decreasing so velocity is decreasing constantly so this is very important constant decrease in velocity same is the case when you are coming back from point b to c you can see here that the gradient is changing constantly and you know that this time the gradient is negative so simply you can say that the velocity at point c is being considered as negative velocity why because the slope of the graph is a negative actually this last uh, slope should not be very straight line but just like this there should be a slope so this is very important that when the ball you are throwing from point a to point uh, b and coming back to c again and there is no change in the values uh, here at point a and c it means that whatever the velocity we have at point a the same velocity we have at point c it means that we are not considering the air resistance so this is very important here we have mentioned these two points a then b a to b the ball is moving up b to c the ball is coming back to its original position and what we can consider here that the uh, value of velocity at point a is same as that of c but only the direction has been changed 
so the uh, velocity if we are taking at point a as positive and we can take the velocity at point c as negative the thing is that the gradient is actually telling us that whether the velocity is positive or negative as the gradient here is uh, or slope here is positive so the velocity is positive and over here as the slope or gradient is negative so the velocity is negative and i repeat at the, at the highest point or at the top position the gradient is zero which shows that the velocity is zero so this is very important here we want to draw the velocity time graph proper velocity time graph here any in this slide we have already discussed everything but here we want to draw the graph velocity time graph which is a corresponding graph of this situation so what is the situation we have thrown here the body the ball at point a so the the, the velocity initial velocity at this point a whatever the uh, gradient we have here this will be the value of the velocity and when you will reach the highest point any point b so the velocity will be zero at the moment and you can say that this is the position of the highest uh, you can say point and when you are coming back to point c as i have already explained that your velocity is negative so you can say that the value over here and the value somewhere here is same but here we have positive velocity and here we have negative value or negative velocity so this is one thing here we have to consider one uh, uh, big uh, you can say a uh, concept and the concept is that when the body is moving up or coming down throughout you can say and see that the slope is constant so if the slope is constant it means that the acceleration is constant because we actually know that the velocity time graph shows the or give us the uh, a, a concept of acceleration by getting the gradient of this graph what we are getting actually or what we want to know the acceleration and as throughout you can say and see that the graph is, has the same gradient so simply you can say that the acceleration is constant throughout and what is the value 9.8 what is the sign negative so be careful of this negative sign here you have to remember that the distance time graph and of course the related or corresponding velocity time graph these two graphs are very important and here one thing which uh, we can uh, uh, you can say determine is the distance covered so here you have this area under the velocity time graph which is giving you the distance covered so when you are reaching to your highest point this is the dis distance covered you have so this is very very important that this is the distance covered you have but what will happen when you will consider the other part of the graph yani this part of the graph then the area which you are getting is the negative area or negative value of the area you can say so simply when you will uh, add these two displacements because you know that displacement is a vector quantity so when you will add these two displacements one positive say this is your uh, suppose s1 and this is your s2 so simply you will say that s1 plus minus s2 and as both of these s1 and s2 are equal to each other then simply the thing is that s1 minus s2 will be equal to 0 so this is what we have as far as the final displacement s is concerned so here we have the situation that the body is coming back to its original position body is coming back to its original position so displacement will be zero and you can see that the displacement is zero and you have come back to the position where from where you have started your journey so the displacement is zero so this is very very important thing here uh, we have to consider again the same uh, situation but here uh, we again 
we can consider this thing that the area under the velocity time graph to this point will uh, give the maximum displacement as i have already explained this point so at this point when you will reach from point a to point b this is your displacement and when you are coming back this is your displacement so we have actually already discussed this point so need not to repeat this thing again here this is very important that when you are going to draw the corresponding acceleration time graph of your velocity time graph in this case you will observe and actually we have already discussed this point that the gradient is constant throughout the motion and as the gradient is constant so the acceleration is constant so you are just mentioning here that the acceleration is constant but as uh, we have discussed already that the gradient throughout is a negative so the value of the acceleration is a negative which is of course 9.8 meter per second square so this is the value but here you have to consider again that when you are moving up the body was decelerating because the velocity from this position to this position the velocity is decreasing constantly but when you are coming back on the other side of the graph you will say and see that the velocity which velocity negative velocity is increasing yani the ball has taking a turn u turn you can say and is coming back and simply you can say that the velocity is negative and the velocity negative the gradient same it means that here basically this part of the graph this part of the graph where we have negative acceleration this shows the deceleration and the next part of the graph where we have again negative acceleration this shows the acceleration in the opposite direction yani when you are going from position a to position b the deceleration is taking place because the positive velocity is decreasing but when you are coming back from b to c this is your position a this is your position b and this is your position c suppose then again as i have already mentioned that the negative velocity is increasing so the acceleration is taking place so be careful of this uh, concept that the acceleration is always negative 9.8 meter per second square so this is not the situation that when you are going up you are taking acceleration due to gra gravity negative and coming back so positive no throughout the vertical motion your acceleration will be negative and this is a very uh, important uh, concept to understand that this negative is not showing the uh, deceleration or acceleration but partly when you are going from point a to point b the velocity is decreasing and when uh, you are drawing the corresponding uh, acceleration time graph the negative a is showing you the deceleration but from b to c when you are coming back to the same position yani you have thrown a ball and then you are coming back so when you are coming back to the same position so what will happen the displacement will be zero one thing the second thing is that the acceleration when you are coming back will always be negative so this is negative this is negative but this negative shows the acceleration but this negative shows the deceleration in the body so this is very very important thing here we have few examples like if you are uh, uh, if you have a situation tossed ball and you are drawing the displacement time graph here you can write the units as well so displacement time graph corresponding velocity time graph and then of course the corresponding acceleration time graph you have so i i have already discussed this point that you have thrown or tossed your ball up so this was the velocity this was this was the positive velocity which was decreasing and at this point yani if you want to draw a line suppose from this position so you can say that we are somewhere here suppose and 
what this part shows maybe it's not very perfectly drawn line but from this point a to b you have the situation that the ball is moving up at point b the velocity is zero and from point a to b the situation of the acceleration is negative a but this is the deceleration because the slope of this graph is continuously or constantly decreasing but when you are coming back the next half from b to c the slope is increasing so the velocity is increasing on the negative side or negative velocity is increasing you can say but again the same thing negative doesn't mean the decrease here the negative only showing the change in direction so what will happen here again you have negative a but as i have already explained that this negative a is showing you the acceleration on the uh, in the opposite direction so these are few things which you have to understand that how you will draw the corresponding graphs of displacement time velocity time and acceleration time so this is very very important then here you have another situation where you have dropped ball situation so the dropped ball situation means that you have dropped a ball from a height and here you can see the difference between these two in this case initial displacement is zero but in this case you have some initial displacement in the value you have of the initial displacement from suppose this is two meter so simply you can say that the two meter is the initial displacement or initial height from where we are dropping the ball and what is happening throughout you can say and see that the decrease in gradient we have so what is the situation the negative velocity is increasing the negative velocity is increasing so again the same situation you have here the velocity time graph displacement time graph velocity time graph and acceleration time graph but the point is that here you have the situation of acceleration a which is negative but again the same thing the negative acceleration is not showing you here the deceleration as you can see here and in this graph that the velocity is increasing so basically this negative a is showing you the acceleration but here you have dropped the ball you have just dropped the ball it means that why uh, i am emphasizing on this point dropped the ball because this point at a distance or height of 2 meter the initial gradient is zero so the initial velocity is zero and this shows the point over here in the velocity time graph that the velocity initial velocity is zero so this is very very important here uh, you can say and see that the initial velocity is zero but then negative velocity is decreasing and of course you can imagine this fact that we are considering the downward direction as the negative direction so this is important here that actually which direction we are considering so simply you can say that when we are considering the downward direction as a negative direction downward direction we are taking as negative direction so because of this fact we are considering that the velocity is negative on the other hand if you will come to the displacement time graph then you have to use the concept of gradient so as you can see here that initially the velocity is zero and then it is increasing then the gradient is increasing the negative gradient is increasing that's why you are considering or you are taking the uh, velocity from zero to negative side so uh, simple thing is that when you have increase in velocity this negative a will not show you the deceleration but it will show you the acceleration so this is very very important thing you have to remember this uh, all uh, these conditions or, the, or in all these examples we have considered zero air friction so but if you will consider here the uh, resistance then the, what you can say 
that here we have falling with air resistance so what will be the situation if you will consider the air resistance so this is very important here you have to again uh, consider the velocity time graph and of course uh, we have already discussed that what is happening as far as the acceleration is concerned so here you can say and see that this is the position of velocity so this is your say projected upwards so the dotted graph this graph dotted graph is showing you the velocity time graph without air resistance yani you are not considering in this case the air resistance but when you will consider the second one you will say that here we have bt graph with air resistance with air resistance so here actually you have to consider two main things one is which is very obvious the in this case the situation any yani when you are drawing the graph vt graph without air resistance then you can see that the gradient of this graph the dotted line you can say is always constant and there is no change in the acceleration but when you are coming to the point where you are considering the air resistance as well you can say that the slope of the graph the slope of this graph is constantly decreasing so you can say that the acceleration is becoming zero slowly and gradually and at this point somewhere here when you will extend this graph you can say that the uh, the velocity is approaching your terminal velocity so if you can recall the o level or igcse uh, concept of terminal velocity so terminal velocity is the velocity where the uh, you can say upward and downward forces are equal to each other and the body is moving with the constant velocity so here you can say and see that this is a line which is constant so here the terminal velocity is constant and what you can say that the velocity graph is approaching terminal time graph uh, ter uh, your terminal velocity and what is happening the acceleration slowly and gradually decreasing in this case so when you are projecting something upward with the consideration of the air resistance then of course the value of g will change will decrease and at one point uh, what point the point where you have attained or achieved the terminal velocity the acceleration becomes zero so this is uh, which is which, uh, uh, the point to remember another thing which is very important to understand here which actually we have already discussed that when you are considering your graph without air resistance then you can say and see that the area under the curve is this triangle which i have drawn with the the purple color but when you are considering the air resistance then you can say and see that only this part or this area you we are getting and you can see that this area is less than before yani i can draw or i can write here suppose this is the s1 this is your s1 which is with out with out air resistance and here you have s2 which is with air resistance so simply you can say that s1 is greater than s2 yani simply you can say that the body will not attain the same height as the body was attaining when we were not considering the air resistance so this is very very important point to understand same is the discussion for your dropped from the rest so as we have discussed already that if you will consider the dotted line so the dotted line as i said this this is basically showing you the graph velocity time graph without air resistance and here you have the situation of the graph with air resistance so again you can say and see that in this case the gradient yani when we are considering vt graph without air resistance 
then you can say and see that the slope is different and when you are considering this situation of uh, your uh, uh, any with air resistance then the graph is taking another turn and approaching the uh, uh, the uh, terminal velocity so this is very very important here again uh, we can consider one thing which is the projected downward so if you are throwing something downward then what will happen you will have the initial velocity and this is actually the velocity here projected downward which we have discussed and you can again say and see that this is the graph without air resistance and this is the graph with air resistance so you can very uh, simply imagine that what is happening in this case so uh, the point actually here we have to mention which is very important that in both the cases of course if you are uh, like uh, dropping something or if you are uh, projecting something downward then the uh, displacement like suppose if you have this height and from this height you are dropping something simply or if you are throwing something or projected downward so what will happen in both the cases simple uh, thing is that the displacement is not changing displacement is a, a particular height so what is actually happening what we can say that if we will consider the displacement so uh, here we can only say that the same displacement will be covered in smaller uh, time or shorter time interval this is very very important thing so the displacement will remain the same but when you will consider the air resistance it will take more time but when you will not consider the air resistance it will take lesser time so the displacement of course will be same as i said that if you have a displacement from a to b so whether you are considering air resistance or not considering air resistance there is no uh, difference as far as the displacement is concerned but this displacement will be covered in a shorter interval of time when you will consider the vt graph without air resistance and it will take long time when you will consider the air resistance so this is something which is very important to understand and i hope uh, you have uh, developed this uh, idea you have developed these concepts uh, inshallah in the next lecture we will discuss uh, the, the uh, other aspects of the kinematics so this is what we have for today and i will show you uh, the animations of these graphs as well so uh, uh, we will be continue with this discussion and uh, i will show you the uh, the velocity time graph and corresponding acceleration time graph and the displacement time graph okay okay here we have uh, th these two graphs position time graph velocity time graph and acceleration time graph in this in these uh, graphs you can very easily uh, determine this fact that here when you will consider the velocity time graph the velocity time graph has the same gradient throughout but in this case you can say and see that the negative displacement which is uh, the displacement below uh, uh, zero here you have this uh, zero but below this line zero line the uh, uh, the displacement you have it means that you uh, actually have thrown a ball upward but but you have not caught the same ball at zero position or at the same position but uh, you have dropped that so what will be the situation the uh, ball is going suppose towards uh, the earth actually this was the position you were standing somewhere at the top of a building so you you draw you have thrown the ball up and the ball is coming back but the point is that when you are coming back the the uh, ball uh, was not caught at the same position and it drops to the uh, you can say earth or it moves towards the earth so what is happening in this case the these points are showing you the negative velocity which actually have started from the top position or simply you can say that you are showing this uh, situation over here 
that the velocity is uh, this point third point actually is showing you the negative gradient yani acceleration is negative but basically this is the acceleration in the opposite direction so this is very important and when you will consider these three points and considering these three points you will consider the displacement time uh, uh, you, your displacement by taking the area under the curve then you will say and see that here we have a greater area under the curve of these three lines as compared to this one so simply you can say that the difference of these two areas yani here you have this area and here you have another area so the difference of these two areas will give you the idea that what is the displacement of uh, your body you can say from the top of the building if you are throwing something then what was or what is the height of the building so the difference of these two displacements then the this difference uh, this displacement which you can get from the velocity time graph and the above one which you can get from the velocity time graph you will take the difference of these two and you will get the height of the building so the, the, these type of questions they can ask you and again as i have already explained this fact that these three points are giving you acceleration which is again negative but all these negative values are basically showing you the acceleration in the downward direction so as uh, we can adjust easily so last three blocks of acceleration time graph will uh, show you negative value of acceleration but this negative value as i uh, have just used the term acceleration so the body is moving downward with acceleration but for these two graphs you can say the first part or first block of acceleration time graph is showing you deceleration so this is what we have and of course as uh, we can do number of changings here so suppose you are considering this situation and then you are somewhere here suppose this is the situation you have so what you can say that initially the ball is moving up from this point to this point the ball was moving up and the deceleration was the situation of the acceleration or negative a but from this point to this point the acceleration in the opposite direction is taking place so you can say that this uh, second block of acceleration time graph is showing you this behavior or the, of the graph then as there is no change between these two velocities so it means that here in this interval in the third block we do not have any acceleration so in acceleration time graph the third graph will show you a straight line and uh, this is straight line actually is along the zero line of acceleration it means that no acceleration you have then here you can say again that here you have the acceleration from this point to this point you have again the acceleration and this is negative but again as i said that this is acceleration thing so in this way you can uh, uh, see that what is happening and you can describe the displacement time graph velocity time graph and acceleration time graph you can even take this graph somewhere here and then you can say and see that what is happening so different situations of the positions you can take here and of course you can explain the displacement time graph velocity time graph and acceleration time graph so uh, whatever the uh, possibility you have suppose this is the situation so initially the acceleration is zero in the first block which you can say here as well then you have the deceleration so just to make this de deceleration a value here we have this deceleration then again from this point to this point we have the acceleration then again here we have the situation of the uh, deceleration but again the same point here we have to consider like suppose this point then where we will be so very easily you can determine the displacement time graph corresponding displacement time graph and the corresponding velocity and acceleration time graph with the help of this animation 
so the animation you can say and see that oh physics and uh, uh, we are uh, thankful to this uh, side which is helping us to understand that what is going on and uh, inshallah in the next discussion we will be continue with the, the chapter number 2 and uh, if you are new on my celeb on my uh, youtube channel then subscribe this channel press the bell icon share and like this uh, uh, discussion this lecture and uh, when you will subscribe and you will share of course uh, you can get the new lectures whenever we will upload and of course the other students can get the benefit of it as well